Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel many, many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years and the main thing that I enjoy about this brewery is that they're not afraid to try different styles and even within all these different style categories that they touch upon, you're pretty much guaranteed a good beer in my experience. So it's always nice to try different things from these guys. For this review then, we are are going to return to Gothenburg, Jutebor as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the west coast. Always good to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers because of channel tradition and yada yada yada. But for this review then, we are going to touch upon a style that is very popular these days and we're going to return to the wonderful beer bibliothek for this one. So this particular beer is number 295 in their numbering system. It's called I Never Agreed to Date You Without a Beard. Comes in at 6.9% ABV and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. The beer was released as part of the local Carlos Mosca League assortment for February of 2021 through Systembolag here in Sweden. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that this one is as good as the other New England IPAs I've had from Beer Bibliotech in the past. Um, I couldn't tell you what the last New England IPA I had from these guys was. I remember a couple of months back having a beer that was called like Satsumas for Boomers, but the beer that we had last month in January of 2021 was um, these trash filled streets make me feel like I'm at home or something like that. Um, but that was a lovely brown ale actually, so uh, a style that you don't come across too often these days. And again, that highlights my point that Beer Blue Tech are very good when it comes to brewing lots of different styles of beer. But yeah, New England IPA, 6.9% ABV this one, and hopefully it's as good as the other beers we've had from them in recent times. Times, but knowing beer blue tech it will be and as always i hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from beer blue tech before and that will no doubt be added to in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture brain fart there but whatever one takes your fancy and uh, as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated and don't forget to check out the, play the playlist of beers from different countries this one will appear in the swedish list and there's lists there for many many different countries but anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about beer bibliotech once again so beer bibliotech as i've told you already are based in Gothenburg, Jutebori, up there on the Swedish West Coast, and the company was founded back in 2013 by a multinational group of friends. This is Adam Norman, who's Australian, Richard Bull, who's a Kiwi, New Zealand, Anders Hedlund, who is Swedish, and then Darl Denecker, who comes from South Africa. But Adam and Richard ran Bar Doppio in Gothenburg, and then Darl and Anders were regular customers at the bar, and you know, the four of them often just used to sit and talk about different styles of beer, uh, different beers that they tried, and little bits about brewing and things like that, and then one day they decided they were going to buy a brew kit and start to brew their own beer and it's going pretty well for them I think it's fair to say. But the original brewery is in the old Klippan Sugar building which is a really nice old building very close to the old Carnegie brewery in Gothenburg and that's a really quite famous company actually. I still need to review the old Carnegie Porter for you here on the channel at some stage but I've not seen that in quite some time come to think of it but that's a review that definitely needs to be done. But the original brew kit that they had is from Brewfab in Scotland. I believe that is now in the hands of Stockholm Brewing Company and uh, in the first year that these guys were operating they apparently brewed 38 different varieties of beer and they say that all of their beers are brewed you know in very very small batches and so that they kind of stick to this whole idea of uh, you know home brewing and brewing things once basically but in fairness to them they for a long time they didn't have a kind of core fixed range and I guess you can still argue that they don't but there are beers that are quite popular and you'll see those uh, quite often actually you'll see a lot of rebrews of those beer. A moment of clarity which was the GBG Beer Week beer for 2017, if I remember rightly. That's one that you'll see quite often. A Passion for Gingers is another one. That's a good beer that I do recommend that you check out. And I think quite a few of the black IPAs and other things have been uh, rebrewed 
uh, on diff at different points in time. So yeah, they do rebrew the beers that proved to be really quite popular. Um, but in 2015, they opened a second brewery in Kingston, which is now where they have their main tap room and run their main brewing operations from. The old brewery is brewed uh, is used now mainly for producing sour beers as well as a few kind of pilot things. And uh, they're working on a barrel aging project in the new brewery as well at the moment. There's been only one beer, I think, released from that through System Bolaga thus far. And uh, I hope that over the course of 2021, we start to see a few more of those beers but there have been if you look at the website they've got an extensive list of all the different beers that they've done and there are some very very interesting things in there including a scotch ale which i do want to try at uh, at some point fairly soon hopefully but uh, yeah some really interesting things in the beer blue tech barrel aging system but uh, not so many of them released through sweden thus far i think most of those have gone to the export market just you know because they'll travel a bit better and um, but the main idea behind the name beer blue tech is that they wanted to basically create a wide variety of their beers so that customers could learn something new about say a different exact a different variety of hops a different yeast strain or a different type of malt but basically they wanted to create a library of beers hence the name beer bibliotech or you know based on the word bibliotech uh, but as of february 2021 when i'm filming this review for you these guys have produced in the region of 270 different beers the main thing as you'll see this one is review is number number 295 there are a few beers that don't make it out there because the batch just doesn't turn out so well so i think um over the course of their existence to have a nearly 90% success rate. I think that's uh, pretty cool, actually. And I mean, when you see the quality of the beers that they're putting out there, uh, you know, it is a pretty good rate of return, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, as I said earlier, they produce lots of different styles of beer, uh, lots of different IPAs, West Coast, uh, Imperial Stouts, Black IPAs, I've had Belgian IPAs from these guys, Brown Ales, you know, just lots of different things, actually. So this is a brewery that I would always recommend uh, that you have a few things from and just you know pick a style of beer that you like from these guys and to be honest with you I'd say it's pretty it's a pretty sure thing that you're going to get a good beer out of Beer Bibliotech within that style category. So um yeah that's all I can really say about Beer Bibliotech for the moment. I'm hoping that we can feature these guys on a Meet the Brewery segment at some point in the future. I've spoken with Daryl Denecker from the brewery uh, through Messenger on quite a few occasions so fingers crossed we can set up a, a Meet the Brewery segment with him at some point fairly soon uh, once this whole COVID-19 pandemic is gone. But uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about Beer Bibliotech, of course, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. I think both of the different breweries have their own Facebook pages because there are tap rooms at both of the different breweries at Klepan and Kingston. So uh, yeah, do make sure you check out both of those pages and um, you can always uh, look at the untapped rate beer and beer advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So as you can see, this one is a little 330 milliliter can. This is typical of Beer Bibliotech. They do tend to release their beers in 330s. Um, and I think I paid, you know, maybe about 35 Swedish kroner for this beer once again. So that's going to translate roughly to about three pounds sterling, maybe three pounds 25. So about three, uh, about three euros 50, maybe about four dollars American, something like that, just to translate the price for you. But like I said, this beer was released as part of the local that's most likely the sortiment for February of 2021. And it says on the sign here, uh, a New England IPA. We agreed that we'd save the rainforests, that we'd save the whales, even save the world, but we never agreed you could shave the beard get yourself over to beerbibliotech.com and i think that this i think this outline here i think this is the four founders of the brewery actually um so yeah richard bull um oh i forget what the new zealand guy's name is let me bring that back so yeah richard bull's from new zealand adam norman uh, anders headland and alden ecker i think this is the four founders that are kind of found that up here and as you can see all of them have different uh, facial hair. I'm pretty sure this one is Daryl Denecker. I'm sure Daryl Denecker's quite a tall kind of skinny chap, if I remember rightly. But uh, yeah, 6.9% ABV. Let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Curious about this. There we are. So yeah, I really enjoyed the brown ale from these guys last month. And I have to say, um, I do like this with Beer Bibliotech. You know, I've had barley wines from them last year. I had like a, was it a rye wine or something it was called? Uh, you know, just a really, really unusual beer. So I do like that about keeping an eye on Beer Bibliotech. These guys have always got something interesting to put out there. And every so often they'll put out a more sort of conventional beer, I guess you could say as well. So um, yeah, you can smell the juiciness from this beer already actually but uh yeah there we go so yeah as you can see and as you would expect from a new england ipa this one's poured a lovely 
very hazy, kind of dark yellowy colour. It looks like a sort of mixed fruit juice, this one, to be honest with you. You can see um, it's got about a one third finger of a frothy, I would say perfect white head. That's fading away to be a very, very thin foamy layer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look pretty much as you would expect from a New England IPA. As I said, this one, the colour of this beer really reminds me of like a mixed tropical fruit juice. I always like comparing these New England IPAs to uh, different kind of fruit juices, if you like, because that's just what they remind me of. But uh, yeah, the colour of these beers, remember, is dependent on two things. One, the type of malts you use. Two, the length of the wort boil. longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, thus you get a darker colour out of it. But in the first instance, it's dependent on those different types of malts. And the haziness in this beer, I would say for a 6.9 percenter, it's kind of in the middle of the spectrum. The level of haziness that you'll get in a New England IPA is dependent on, you know, the wheat and, uh, and the oat content, of course. So, uh, yeah, different breweries use different ratios of all these kind of things. So, um, yeah, this, I think, should be quite interesting. But you can smell a lovely juiciness off this beer just as you move it around. So, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this beer. Very, very curious to see um, how this one turns out. That smells really nice. That smell good. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what it is that Beer Blue would take do with their beers, but they've always got a really just nice roundness to the fruit when it comes to IPAs, be it West Coast or New England. Um, they just always get a lovely juiciness and wetness to the fruit. I don't, I don't think there's another brewery in Sweden who quite do the fruitiness in these IPAs in the same way that Beer Bibliotech do. So um, yeah, if you like your IPAs, then Beer Bibliotech are um, definitely a, a brewery to check out in that sense. Um, yeah, it is pretty cool. So yeah, um, it's got a lovely kind of green component to it as well, this one, come to think of it. Yeah. So where to start with this beer then? On the malty side of things, and remember, as I've said before, there's kind of six ways you can take a New England IPA. Farmhousey, uh, you know, sort of more yeasty farmhousey sort of thing, you know, barley malt leaning, soft and white bread, oaty and creamy, wheaty and bitey, and you know, a sort of rye grainy sort of thing, as well as more kind of brown sugary leaning. This one to me, um, I would say this one has a good balance between being oaty and creamy. It's got a wee bit of a kind of brown sugary element to it as well, but you also, get a bit more of a kind of soft bready note and sort of wheaty biting so there's kind of four different elements coming out in this one so it's quite well balanced but I think the more that you smell of it the more you get the kind of oatiness um, out of this beer so yeah it's quite an interesting definitely quite an interesting uh, combination this one I have to say so yeah um, so yeah, malty side of the beer, you can smell a lovely kind of soft white bready note there just forming the basis of the beer um, You've got a little bit, if you take the aroma in quite deeply, you do get a nice little bit of wheaty bitiness in there. Some lovely big kind of thick creamy oats coming out of it. Um, so yeah, it's kind of at the back of the nose, you get a nice, um, you do get quite a nice um, wheaty bitiness there. You can get a crisp sort of soft white bready note in there, but further forward on the nose, I think you're getting more of a kind of smooth, big, thick, oaty sort of thing. Um, it's a bit strange actually, I'm almost getting like a little bit of vanilla out of this beer, it smells like the oats almost give you just a little bit of sweetness and you know sometimes oats can do that in New England IPAs like this. So for me there's a good bit of, um, there's definitely a good bit of just oaty sweetness to this beer actually. Um, yeah, quite interesting to be honest with you. So yeah, you do get a wee bit of a kind of brown sugary note to this one, a wee bit of a boozy kind of caramelly note in there but also it's got that kind of Werther's original type sweetness to it which I think works very very well so yeah there's there's a fairly interesting there's quite an interesting um there is quite an interesting thing going on with the the malty side of this beer um yeah I'm just curious to see how this translates into the into the flavour. When it comes to the green side of the hops in this beer, you get a wee touch of earthiness out of it, which is to be expected. You've got a nice big kind of floral aromatic sort of thing, and you've got a nice kind of, you do have a nice light kind of grassiness to the beer as well. And I do think the grassiness actually kind of dominates the, the aroma a little bit. For me, it does smell a little bit like kind of freshly cut grass when it comes to the green uh, component in the beer. So that's a really interesting point to make about this one, I would argue. But um, yeah, yeah, the, the fruity side of this beer 
I think comes out very, very nicely, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, the fruity side is complementing the green side of things very, very well. So where to start on the fruity side of the beer? Um, for me, there's quite a bit of orange to this one. Um, so I would think this is maybe Amarillo or Mosaic. I think there might be a bit of that in here. You know, the other hops that it could be, you know, Mandarin, Bavaria, Azaka. Azaka I wouldn't be surprised about because there is a fair tropical component to this beer as well, come to think of it. Um, but yeah, for me, there's a nice big kind of orangey. There's a nice sort of big orangey component sitting underneath this beer. But at the same time, you've got some really soft and quite bright tropical fruits coming out of the beer. Um, so there's a wee, I wouldn't say passion fruit could this be like a mosaic and idaho seven combination something like that um so yeah there's quite a bit of that soft tropical note if you take the aroma in quite deeply you do get a bit of that stronger kind of passion fruity tropical note out of the beer there's a lot of soft um i don't know if i would say there's there's a lot of mango in this one there is a wee bit of it but you've got apricots and papayas and these very very soft tropical fruits um but you've also got a very nice um as I say, you've also got just a big orangey, citrusy kind of thing coming out of this one. And there's quite a bit of pineapple for me in this beer as well, come to think of it. On top of the kind of orangey citrus, there's a wee bit of pineapple sitting there. And that's what makes me wonder about Azaka, to be honest with you. Um, but it's got a fair little zestiness to it. And again, Azaka gives you a kind of mandarin -y, kind of sharper mandarin -y orange. And this beer has got me thinking about that. Maybe Azaka and, uh, maybe Azaka and Idaho 7. Could be something like that that's going on in here. So yeah, um, I always like playing guess the hops with these beers, but you know it's getting progressively harder to be accurate with it because there's so many different hops out there these days. Um, it's really difficult to just keep up with everything that's going on. But yeah, lovely soft tropical fruity side to this beer. Then it's got more of a kind of oily, orangey, citrusy kind of thing going on as well. So take a bit of time to enjoy that aroma, but we're going to have a taste of this beer now and see how we get on. So to give the beer its full name, I never agreed to date you without a beard number 295 in the Beer Blue Tech numbering system, a New England IPA coming in at 6.9% ABV. Let's have a taste of this one then. Slanger, Skull, cheers. Yeah, that's another really, just really solid, very, very drinkable uh, New England from Beer Bibliotech. And you know, this is what we've kind of come to expect from this brewery in honesty. And you know, this is one of the things, one of the things that's going through my head just now when I try this beer, I'm like, you know, yeah, it's a really solid New England IPA. Um, and it's, it's really, well executed. I mean, if you compare this to what Stieg Berriots are doing, what Apex, Ten Hands, you know, all of these other IPA breweries in Sweden, Brewski, and everybody like that, this one, it stands up, you know, really quite well. But when it comes to beer bibliotech, you know, for me, um, the most striking beers that these guys do are the ones that are styles that you don't come across all that often. That's the thing that's going through my head just now. So, in a way, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of saying that with this beer, I'm not as impressed with this one as I am with some of the other ones, but I think that's just because it's a style that we that I drink quite often, actually. I think that's probably one of the things that I would say about Beer Bibliotech, is that I'm maybe a little bit more enthusiastic about the, the beers they brew that you don't, you know, the styles that you don't come across so often. But if you're really into your New England hazy IPAs, you are going to enjoy this one. I like this style. As I say, to me, this is just, it's another really solid release from them, but maybe not quite as striking as some of the other ones that I've uh, I've come across before. But that's not to take anything away from this beer as a New England IPA. So just bear that in mind with this one. There's lots of, you know, there's lots of, um, you know, lots of different New England IPAs out there these days. And this one is really damn solid. The standard of New England IPAs in Sweden these days, it's very, very high as well, remember. And I think this one, again, stands up very, very well. Um, so yeah, where to start with this one then? I mean, straight away, in the middle of your palate, you can feel that nice sort of soft, white bready kind of thing um, going right across the middle of the tongue. The one thing that I would say surprises me about this beer a little bit is how sort of barley malt and kind of bready leaning it is, because it does give the impression that it's going to be a little bit more maybe 
it's going to have a wee bit more kind of oatiness from the aroma actually i felt this beer and the aroma really started to lean towards the oatiness but it's actually a really you know it's actually a very barley malt leaning new england ipa this one in my mind so yeah in the middle third of your palate nice soft white bready quality just blanket in the blanket in the middle of your tongue as you move further back um, towards the border region between middle third and back third of your palate you get a wee bit of a sort of bread crusty quality coming out of the beer then in the back third of your palate you can feel there's a little bit of a slightly wheaty bitiness there and you can feel that the the wheaty quality on that back third of your tongue is um it's just a little bit kind of bigger the beer has a wee bit of thickness on that um on that back third of your palate there but again it doesn't feel overly thick this is actually um a kind of more almost crisp and almost sessionable New England IPA in a lot of ways come to think of it. So yeah, this is an interesting approach. It is quite different to the other New Englands that I've had um, from these guys. I mean, the last, the last New England that I had from these guys, I think, was it called Muck? And that was a collaboration with Apex Brewer, and that was, you know, really, really nicely done. That's probably the best New England I've had from these guys. And it was just, you know, the, the way everything went together in that was just uh, beautiful. So this that was a very smooth and very kind of creamy New England from what I remember. And um, that was towards the, was that in the middle of December that I reviewed that? Something like that, just before I went home to Scotland, actually. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the flavour of this one is, it, this is quite different in terms of its profile, to be honest. Hmm. So yeah, in the middle third of your palate, you can feel a little bit of oatiness there. You feel a little bit of that kind of smooth oaty sweetness coming out of the beer later on. But in the very centre of your palate, you can feel that there's a little bit of a sort of Werther's original kind of butter candy sort of thing coming out of this beer. So I do appreciate that out of this one. But like I say, the whole malty side of this beer leans towards that soft and almost slightly crisp white bready kind of thing. So yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, there's a nice little bit of um, of earthiness there. As you move further forward, you can feel there's a wee touch of herbal quality, but as you move towards the very kind of front corners of the tongue, it does show a more kind of floral and, and aromatic type quality. I wouldn't describe this one as spicy or resiny or anything like that. It's just got a nice wee bit of that kind of bright floral aromaticity to it, which is is quite interesting and you can feel there is the bitterness in the back corners of the palate does develop a little bit more but round the front curve of the tongue you've got a nice little lighter grassy sort of thing coming out of the beer it does develop a wee bit of a kind of citrusy zesty kind of thing to it so um yeah i like how this one goes together hmm. and i think you know the green component in this beer does suit it does actually suit the um the malty side of the beer pretty well uh, in my mind so yeah this is this is quite an interesting one for sure um so yeah uh, from that side of things i think the green component and the malty side of the beer go together quite well the fruity side of things then um i was wanting to let the fruit kind of develop a little bit in my mouth and again it comes across as fairly straight shooting mm. so yeah um it, the fruity side of the beer the, the tropical fruits, I think, don't come out quite as much in the flavour as you might expect from the aroma. Um, but it does have a really nice level of fruitiness at the same time. It's actually more kind of orangey and citrusy leaning than the aroma would have you believe. The aroma gives you a more kind of illusion of it being very tropical at the same time as being quite citrusy. But yeah, as I always say, on that front third of your palate, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. If you go to that border region, between front third and middle third of your palate you can feel there is a bit of a soft kind of white bready quality in there a little bit almost bread crusty in a way but at the back uh, just in front of that you've got a nice wee kind of uh, you do get a little bit of that slightly stronger tropical fruit note there maybe a wee touch of passion fruit but as you move further forward from that you get a bit of mango as well but then i think quite quickly the tropical side of this beer turns to be more sort of pineapple i really think there's a bit of a zaka in this one come to think of it but i'll say that and i'll be wrong of course it's just you know sod's law to be honest with you but then as you move towards the front half of that front third of your tongue you do get more of a kind of oily orangey type quality coming out of this beer which is uh, which again is quite interesting so yeah i do appreciate that about how this beer goes together as well um so yeah nice little bit of an or oily orangey kind of citrus quality coming out of this beer 
uh, on the front side of things. So yeah. But yeah, um, is there anything more to say about the fruit? I think, yeah, the, oil, the kind of orangey, citrusy kind of thing is there and then the pineapple sort of sits on top of it. Um, but it actually, I mean, on the very kind of front tip of the tongue, you do get a little bit of a kind of lemony, zesty type quality to the beer as well, which is kind of quite interesting. But uh, yeah, this beer is definitely a lot more kind of citrusy than it gives you the impression it's going to be in the, the aroma. So that's an interesting point to make about this one. This is a wee bit different in that sense. But overall, I would describe this as quite a crisp, ready um, kind of New England IPA. It's got a good little bit of kind of grassiness to it as well. And it's quite citrusy leaning this. So quite different to the other New England IPAs that I've I've come across before. Um, so yeah, quite a, you know, just a, a bit of a slightly more drinkable New England IPA in a sense I would describe this one as being. So yeah, interesting approach from Beer Bibliotech, this one. But like I say, the thing that's going through my head with Beer Bibliotech just now is that, for example, the brown ale that we had last time is just a lot more sort of striking than this beer, but maybe it's just because, you know, I review so many New England IPAs, that's that's maybe the thing. So, yeah, try that, yeah, maybe that would be my advice with Beer Bibliotech. Try a style that you don't come across all that often, because you will be in for a bit of a treat with those, but, you know, they do the New England IPAs very, very well, in my experience as well. If you come across the muck from these guys, uh, the, one with eight, the one that they did with Apex Brewing, that's probably the best one. I've had from them in recent times in the New England category, come to think of it. Uh, but yeah, they've got Eternal Dankness if you want something a bit more West Coasty. That's re-released every year, actually, and it's it's pretty damn good. But uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums up all we really need to say about the flavour profile of this beer. In terms of the mouthfeel, I would describe this one as being, you know, right in the middle of the spectrum. Mid-bodied, smooth carbonation. Um, and I think... Mm, yeah, it's got a nice little bit of wetness to it as well. It's a very easy drinking beer, this one. In terms of IBUs, it is what you'd expect for the style. You know, 25, 30 IBUs. The malt base, as I've said, is quite crisp and smooth. You do get a wee bit of sweetness out of it. The more that you drink of it on the front third of your palate, you'll feel a little bit of, you know, thickness from the oats. Um, and then you've also just got a nice uh, little bit of kind of quite citrusy and quite zesty fruity character to this beer. But overall, it's another solid release from Beer Bibliotech. Not quite as striking as some of the other ones that I've had, but like I said, the things that always get me with Beer Bibliotech is how well they do some of these kind of unknown styles, if you like, actually. Or, well, unknown's maybe not the right word. Some of the kind of not as widely brewed styles of beer. That's what I would say about Beer Bibliotech. But yeah, solid, really crisp, quite drinkable. New England IPA in my mind this one so if that's your kind of that if that's what floats your boat I think you will enjoy this one so let's leave it at that for this this one was the I never agreed to date you without a beard number 295 in the beer bibliotech numbering system New England IPA 6.9% ABV released as part of the local this Moscow League assortment through System Balaga here in Sweden on the 1st of February 2021 Really nice beer once again from Beer Bibliotech. That's what we've come to expect. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Beer Bibliotech. We will no doubt return to these guys next month. I think, I can't remember what they're releasing next month, but I'm sure I've got a Beer Bibliotech beer in the list for you to review. Thank you again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer. Let me know your favourite Beer Bibliotech beers and I'll see you soon in another review. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Make sure you check out this brewery.